Guitar practice session 92524. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be practicing and then give you a recap of it so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, verbalize the things that I'm trying to learn to better get it in my head, possibly provide information for others that are working on similar types of stuff, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm trying to be doing here. Our practice sessions might be a little bit different than other sessions you might be following along with because we're going to try to get all of our worksheets going the same way, which hopefully will be a little bit easier on the eyes in that our Excel worksheet is going to have the low or heavy string on top so that when you're positioned behind the guitar, you're looking at the low string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, and you'll have the mirror of that on the worksheet, top string on top, uh, left to right go in the same direction. I'll also turn my guitar around and try to line it up as best I can to even the same place in the worksheet that we'll be working on, which in our case is frets uh, 9 through 13, uh, at this time. So it looks like I'm left-handed, but you can kind of visualize uh, from the perspective of behind the guitar as if it's like your hand is going to be the idea of it. Now this time I'm going to be looking at uh, the Mixolydian mode and what I'm calling uh, position number three. We're going to go over a lot of just naming conventions for these different positions on how we're breaking out the guitar neck. Whenever I'm working on, on these kind of guitar necks, trying to understand the fretboard on the guitar, remember that there's an infinite number of ways that we can break out uh, the guitar neck because that's what's going to give you all the different lines that you might be using as you navigate uh, up and down the guitars. But there's some ways that, of course, are quite standard that conform to like the scales and whatnot. And one way that seems very natural to the guitar is to be breaking it out into uh, five fret uh, chunks because you have four fingers, you have four fingers and a thumb. So that would be the most convenient place to basically uh, place the hands. So that's what we're uh, breaking it out here. And then the question is, well, how do we name those different shapes? And uh, the people have different naming conventions that we'll talk about. And then I'm going to go into the the mode Mixolydian, which is kind of like the bluesy mode because it has in essence that flat seven even though it's a major mode our worksheet is always going to be looking at the modes as no their absolute number names meaning the mode number five is going to be mixolydian if you compare it then to mode number one mode number one being the major scale or ionian mode so if i was in the major scale then mixolydian would be the fifth of the major scale and i'm going to keep that numbering system static so that when I look at Mixolydian, I'm going to change the relative positions, relative one through seven, to work on our intervals, but I'm going to keep the related mode numbers the same, which will help hopefully to orientate us to remember which modes are which, which are the minor modes and the major modes, and how do they relate to our master key, which is generally in Western music going to be uh, the major scale, helping to orientate us kind of like floating around in the universe and we're trying to say no position is better than any other position but we're trying to do physics we're trying to figure out how the world works so we're going to do it from the perspective of the point we're at which is earth right so similar kind of thing here all the all the modes are connected it's like a fractal thing you're floating around all the modes but when we're trying to orientate ourselves typically in western music we do that around uh the 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 sea so we're often going to use that as kind of like the grounding point and that's where the that numbering system will be coming from we'll take a look at uh, the intervals comparing the major mode of the mixolydian intervals to the major scale because if we compare it to the related major or minor in this case major there's only going to be one interval that will be different and then that's the interval that we can kind of basically focus in on. I'm also going to break out this shape that we broke out into the whole fretboard. We break out into five different shapes. And then within each shape, we can break it out further into a string by string breakout. We still want groupings because that's helps us to memorize things. So if I break out the guitar between a five string instrument that has a repeated sixth string, and then, then we can group our five strings into maybe groups of either two, two, one, two strings, two strings, and one string, or into a three, 
two break out, three strings and two strings. I've seen people do it both ways and I'm gonna try to remember, to work on both of those like analogies at the same time. And the three, so so the, the two, two, one breakout is what I'm calling the house double stop, the double stop house, and then the two note per string flat or meat of the hamburger. And then the pentatonic breakout, which is gonna be a three string, two string breakout, I'm gonna call the, uh, the hamburger and then the barbell. The barbell is not as easy to sh see over here because it's been shifted up due to the fault line kink in the tuning. So I, I'm also gonna bounce over here so you can see this barbell, the ends of the barbells. Now the pentatonic shape that most people learn lends itself to the major scale and the relative minor scale. So in order to play other modes with that same shape, then we have to add the added two notes to the five note hamburger, which means we're gonna put, I, I imagine putting a cap on the hamburger, a, a baseball cap that has the bill going up front. And in order to not be top heavy, we also have to add then another bit to the bottom or base or the bottom bun of the hamburger. And with re barbell analogy, then we have to play these two notes in between the barbell, which is usually where our hands would go, which would be the middle of the bar, but you can't have a middle because we have a square here. Therefore, we're gonna play like these two are, are staggered because they even out to be the middle bit, which is where your hands would go. So we have that, so we add those two. So we'll talk about those. We'll talk about each position of the modes where those positions live in relation to those two shapes that we're thinking about, the shape in total, that would be three shapes, the total shape, and then the two interval shapes, the hamburger barbell shape and the house analogy uh, shape. So we're gonna try to do a lot of that at the same time, which might get a little bit messy, but I think I'm getting better, a little bit better at it. And then I stop kinda, and so then we look at all the intervals going forwards and then backwards, but I only go from here to here and then I get tired and I start just like noodling around. And then I don't noodle around anything in particular. I start noodling around over here at some point. And then, uh, and then I started thinking about this shape. When I was noodling around, I'm thinking about this shape. And I was thinking about how I can play the uh, scales with different patterns. And so, and this is the beautiful thing about an Excel worksheet that's top to bottom like this. I think it's easier to kind of just like think about different patterns. So, and this is just a pattern based on that I talked about, I was thinking about yesterday, where if I, if I took each of these top notes and I made a lean back chord from it, the one, three, five of each note, which would be, you know, the, the major, minor, minor, uh, major, <laughs> major, minor, what, what is, then it would, it would be, it would be C's a major, D's a minor, E, would be the minor and then major, major, and so on. Then the, 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 the pattern's actually easy to see because it's in order. This is the one, this is the three, and then this is the five. And if I link them together with this pattern, this would be the, the C pattern, which would be a C major, and this would be the D minor pattern. And then if I link those together, I actually get a, you know, a scale which has a two note per string. It's not the easiest thing to finger because you're kind of going backwards like this, but it's not, you can imagine ways to finger it. And, and again, if you kind of imagine that as your baseline pattern and you improvise over it, you'll start to kind of think of different ways. So I'm thinking about trying to say, well, what if I look at this pattern and I'm trying to go up and back through this pattern and then switching my mind back to when I get up here, kind of my normal, you know, my normal patterns here, which would be this pattern here, and then like this pattern, this was what I would call pattern one, and then pattern two. So I can say, okay, if I'm up here, I'm going to think, oh, I'm going to do this little thing to go down to here. And that brings me into like what I would call pattern one, I can noodle around pattern one, and then go back up this way. So and this is in order C, C D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And it's kind of cool that way. Because again, I can do that that means that every note on this top string, I can just see which mode I'm in or which, uh, which position I'm in relative to the major scale, for example. And then, I can, and then I can play each mode. So if I did, if I compared the C to the D or the one to the two, I'd be playing a C major. If I compared the D and then did the same thing to the E, which would be a minor here, 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 
and then I play the difference between the two, D, E, F, G, then I'd be playing a Dorian. That would be a Dorian mode. And then if I went from the E to the F, uh, I'd be in the Phrygian mode, which has that second. Here's the F, du, du, du. so E, F, G, A, B, C. So I thought that was kind of interesting pattern that we don't, I don't see, I've seen people talk about it. I didn't like make this stuff up, but, but I don't hear many people talking about that. And I think it's mainly because we start from this side in open position and then play leaning forward. But if we start from the middle of the guitar, which is quite common if you're noodling around, then we can start thinking like leaning backwards shape. And that might help to break the, the boxes up a little bit when improvising. So I was messing with that idea. And then I started noodling around uh, with this. Then I got really kind of weird. And I was thinking, well, maybe I can make like there's five patterns so maybe i can make and there's seven notes seven modes so you would think there would be a pattern in between the five patterns since there's seven modes right but and i didn't really get too far with that but i was thinking but i did come to come up with this idea where i was, I was still on the two note per string pattern and i start thinking well what if i did like c d but then I looked for, instead of going in order, I do it out of order and I try to come up with a scale that's still within four to five frets, but it's in like a different order with two notes per string. So if I did that, I can go C, D, and then I'm, instead of going to this E, maybe I jump down to this E, right? So now it's out of order. So I go C, D, E, F, and then G, A, B, C. So you might not play it completely in that order. You might play it this way, C, D, G, A, uh, B, C, E, F. But when I'm noodling around now, now I have all the notes I need in a bit of a different ordering, which again, if I'm improvising, I'm thinking might be a, a, di a way to kind of, again, break out of the box, right? Break, do something a little bit different. Because if I'm playing in this shape right here, or if I'm playing the major like in this shape to do it, then I'm always kind of kind of doing a similar thing just because of the of the of the how my fingers work and right? how everybody's fingers work. So if you just so maybe if I was to if I was to just change the shape a little bit, it would give me some ideas on improvising a little bit differently. And then of course I can I can jump back into my normal shape, right? So my my normal shape would be like here. Duh, 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 duh. So I'd be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But then I'm going to play like in between this shape, which I would call position two, and then this shape, which is like position three. And I can say, so now I'm like in limbo area, and I'm like, I'm playing in limbo. I'm playing in like two and a half, or you can call it, you know, three, you know, th th I'm playing two sharp or like th position three flat or something, right? And then I'm like, so, and then I'm like, I'm going boom, 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 uh, position. So I thought that was kind of interesting and you can do it like, like if you can do it again with any note, I don't think it has to be here because all that's happening is I'm skipping up from here. Instead of going back here, I'm, I'm going up here. So now I'm looking at this one, two, three, instead of picking up the third back here, I'm picking up the third down here that relationship will, will always be the same, although you're gonna have a major third versus a minor third. So if I was to go to the B, I can go B, uh, C, and then the third, instead of going to here, I can go to here, D, E, and then D, D, E, F, G, A, B, right? And so this is another way that I can do every mode on the fretboard a little bit different, right? So here, if I went to the A, which would be an A minor, I go A, B, uh, and instead of the C here, I can go to the C down here. So A, B, C, D, uh, A, B, C, D, and then it would be E, F, G. That's a little bit wonky on that one. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's a little weird because it's all in the same area, but, and then G, A, and then G, A, B, C, D, G, A, B, C, 
D E uh, F G. So it gets it gets a little. I haven't really gone all the way through it, but in any case, that's the other thing I've been kind of uh, thinking about, and I kind of noodle around a little bit on that shape, and then I just play in like G major or something, nothing pretty sloppy, and so that's what I do. Today we're continuing on with what I would call shape number three, looking at mode number five, the mixolydian mode, remembering that I'm using absolute mode numbers here based on the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. In other words, if the Ionian mode or major scale is absolute mode number one, the fifth of the Ionian mode is the mixolydian, therefore I'm gonna call that the fifth mode. I'm on the mixolydian scale. We're still gonna have relative positions one through seven that will change as we go through different modes. Those are relative positions. And then I'm gonna keep the absolute numbering system for the modes based on, once again, the major scale or Ionian as mode number one. So the mixolydian mode is gonna be a major mode given by the fact that it has an uppercase Roman numeral as we can see here. I would call it like the bluesy mode because it has a flat seven. The interval that is different is gonna be the seventh. So it has that flat seven. Out of the three major modes, you would think that of course the Ionian would be the major scale. That's probably the most used mode overall. And then I would think the mixolydian. And the mixolydian is kind of that funny one because a lot of people play, like I say, the bluesy thing where you have a one, four, five progression and they're often throwing in, we're throwing in like a flat seven oftentimes, but we might not be thinking of ourselves in a mixolydian mode. You might be thinking of yourself in a major mode and then flatting the seven or something like that, or even in the relative, I would call minor shape. <laughs> and then you're kind of adjusting it to a major scale and whatnot. But, you, but you, we can also kind of imagine it as in essence being a mixolydian mode. So it's kind of interesting. And then the third mode that's a major mode is what I would call mode number four, which is uh, the Lydian mode. So if I look at the intervals, then we're thinking about comparing these intervals to the major scales, remembering that in the major scale, the intervals should be fairly easy to know because it's either going to be perfect or major. And then, of course, when we compare the minors to their relative major or minor scale, in this case, the major scale, there's going to be one interval that is different. In this case, that interval is the seventh. Instead of having a major seventh, we've got the minor seventh. So the first of the mixolydian has a perfect first. The second has a major second. The third has a four note away major third. The fifth has a five note away perfect fourth. I mean, sorry, the fourth has a five note away perfect fourth. The fifth has a seven note away perfect fifth. And then the six has a nine note away major six. And then the seventh, that's the funny one where you don't have a major, but a minor. And it's gonna give you that uh, 10 note away minor seven. Now that's interesting to note because that means you don't have that leading tone going back home. Uh, so if this is the home bass here, usually in the, in the major scales, you have like a leading tone right before it that leads in, gives you that pole going home. Don't have that in uh in this one so it's kind of like a minor scale in that way that's because it doesn't have that pulling tone and that is once again an area like with the minors that we could add that pulling tone from time to time which might give us a little bit more flavor as we as we go home so right before if you're playing something in the mixolydian we might be playing that you know emphasizing that minor seven to emphasize the mixolydian sound but right before we go home Maybe sometimes we can throw in a chord or actually the, just that note that's gonna be the leading tone that'll give me a little bit more pull before I go back to the one. And obviously music is, is always like, a, maybe, not, maybe it's not ob obvious all the time, but the, what we're trying to do is create tension and then relieve the tension, create tension and relieve the tension. So clearly, you know, when we're moving back home, tension has been created more with that minor seven, and then we and then we have that leading tone that can can help us to, you know, peak that tension until we get back to the one possibly. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the idea. So then on this shape, I'm calling this shape. Now I'm going to name these shapes different things so I can talk to other people with it, and also because I think it's just a different perspective to look at the guitar. So we broke the guitar into five chunks which makes sense because then i can fit my fingers into you know four to five frets which is looks like what the guitar is designed to do in essence 
one common numbering system is just to start in the middle of the guitar and call that basically position one. So if I did that, it'd be from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And notice if I play from the top note in that shape, I'm playing A to A. That's why I might call that a minor you know, position uh, or position one. And then you have shape two, which is overlapping over here, which is kind of funny because if I play it from the top, it would be in essence a Locrian position, right? Because I'd be starting from the uh, Locrian uh, note here. So it'd be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's kind of a funny sound because usually we would probably think of that as the major because we'd probably start on the second note, in which case we'd be playing in essence the major scale. And now we're gonna be on uh, position three. So if there's an overlap here between two and three, here's three. And so if I start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can call that position three that way, or notice I'm starting on the, the this note, which in this key is the Dorian. So I might also call it a Dorian position, noting that if you hear someone say it's a Dorian position, that doesn't mean I can't play any other mode in it. It just means that if I played from the top or made that my center point, then I would be playing in Dorian. So that's another way to just kind of key in to type, like, what am I playing here? Just look at the top note of the shape and then name it. Okay, that's like the Dorian mode shape and then go from there and, and see where you where you need to be. Some people will also call it a off the caged system, which I'm working more with right now because I think it is a good way to kind of, uh, I kind of tie into the shapes. The way the cage system works is we're gonna have the, the open shapes over here and then we're gonna name these five positions based on the open shapes. So that's a little wonky because then we have to name the position uh, based on the shape, which is, which is usually what we name the chord as, but once you get used to that, it actually works pretty well. Now remember that these open shapes only have three notes in them, even though we're playing five notes on the guitar because some of the notes are repeating. Those three notes can be used to name an entire shape, the five, four to five fret shapes because if we put them into the pentatonic then they only they fit uniquely into the pentatonic shape so and then we can add the other two notes from there to get to the major shape so if you think about it that way it's a good it's actually a really nice skeleton system to orientate yourself kind of in the guitar the other kind of problem with it however is that when i'm on this shape i have to say okay what is the related major because because i need to i need to know the major in order to name the shape because the shapes are based off of the major scale that's the key of the of the whole system right and so i have to say well the ionian in this case is c so then if i find my c and i make my shape from there it's a C chord, but it's a D shape. You can see the little triangle up top. I can't really make the whole D this way because my fingers aren't that good. I probably could do it if I practiced, but, but I'm blaming it on my fingers. <laughs> so, so there's that. So then we, so you could call it a, a uh, instead of shape three or Dorian shape, we could call it a, a D shape. Okay. Well then, let's see where we where we stand in our notes here. So I'm gonna say we're, on, we're gonna be looking now at the uh, mixolydian. So if, so if I know that this, this position is a Dorian shape, and I'm like, okay, Dorian, I know is the second mode, it's number two mode, and I wanna get to mixolydian, which rel is absolute mode number uh, five relative to the major scale. So if I, if the, if I use those absolute modal numbering systems, then I can say, well, there I'm on the two, and I could just count up my shape until I get to the uh, back to the one or eight. So I can say there's two, three, four, I'm sorry, until I get back to the five, two, three, four, five. So there's the fifth right there, and there's my G, and that's gonna be then kind of my starting point if I'm using this shape now to be playing in the mixolydian mode instead of uh, the major mode. So I can do that. If I if I know where my C is, and I'm like, hey, look, I named that shape based on the fact that there's my C, then I can do a similar type of thing from here and say, if, well, if that's the one, I know the mixolydian mode is the fifth. So I could count up this shape and say, there's one from that C, two, three, four, five. 
And so there's my G, and then if I find that, I can find the octave this way. So that's another way that we might kind of visualize how to do that. All right, so then we're going to get into our story of <clears throat> the shapes within here. So remember, I can remember this whole shape from top to bottom and play in this shape that way. But I'd like to break it down to further chunks so that I don't have to like know what I'm playing down here by starting from the top and playing down. I can start anywhere in the shape. And I'd like to get better so I can actually see where each mode starts basically in each of the shapes. So, so that's where we're going to break it down. Now, there's two ways I've seen to break it down, two common ways. And remember, the idea here is there's a five notes, five strings on the guitar, and then the sixth is a repeated string. So if I want to break down the five strings on the guitar in this shape to the, to the relative components in it, then I can break them out into, I think it's easiest to break them out into chunks. The chunks could be two string, two string, and one string chunks, or the chunks could be, for example, a three string, two string chunk. Now, the, the, I've seen people do it both ways, and these, if you chunk it out this way, you'll see these shapes all over the guitar. So one way, one way people do it is they do, here's my uh, two, string, two string, one string chunking, where I have this box. I think that's a useful way to see it. I call this the house, the C's house here, because this will be repetitive all over the guitar. And once you see that, you'll be able to see the modes that are in there. And I keep on playing in, you know, C major, A minor mode, these are the modes. But the same thing would be correct if you just shifted everything up on the guitar to play any mode, then you can start to visualize, well, where would the box be if I shifted everything up and played everything in another scale, a whole nother set of seven modes, right? Okay, so so then I'm going to say, so so that's one way to do it. So I could say, here's the, the box double stop, and then here's the double stop box. So every time I see a box in front of it, there's going to be a double stop, right? And then, and then and every time I see a box behind it, there's going to be a double stop. So I'm, every shape is either going to have a box double stop and then a double stop box. And then there's going to be one set of strings that only is one note per string if I'm breaking it out two, two, one at the breakout. And I'm calling that just uh, the two note per string flat or hamburger because this is like my house and my w apartment complex with only two s stories. And then here's the, and then this one has the flat with only one story. This shape, okay, and then the other way people do it, the, the problem with that breakout is that it doesn't fit perfectly into what people see in terms of a pentatonic shape. And if you talk to any kind of like a the bluesy and rock and roll players, the first thing they're going to play usually is a pentatonic shape because it's the most versatile shape. And the first thing we usually visualize oftentimes is this, is this, I would call it a hamburger shape. So you have the hamburger shape and then the barbell shape. And if you're only playing the pentatonic shapes, we're only playing the outside, the outer notes of the hamburger, and in particular, the barbell, the outer notes in the barbell. Now I'm going to copy this barbell over here, copy and paste it so that we can see this barbell uh, like here, where there's not a shift, a kink in the tuning so that you can see why is it a barbell? Because we play the outer side of the barbell and your hands are in the middle of the barbell. And usually those two notes in the middle are removed if you're only playing five out of the seven pentatonic. And those are the two notes that have to be added if we're playing the full seven note scale. All right, so that's gonna be now, so that's gonna be this breakout. So if I, if I think about it in terms of a hamburger barbell five note pentatonic, the reason that's a problem is sometimes is because it lends itself beautifully to the Ionian or major scale and the uh, Aeolian or uh, minor scale. But when you play some other scale, such as we're playing the Mixolydian, then you have to augment it because the Mixolydian is going to include things that are removed that are important. So for example, the F is being removed right now. The F is the Lydian, and I'm going to make that yellow. If it was a five note pentatonic, it wouldn't include that note and it wouldn't in include the Locrian, which is the B in our case. So those are the two that would be removed. Now the B is important though for a Mixolydian 
because it's the third. That's like the flavor of the three note chord. And the seven is also really important for a mixolydian because that's the defining tone. So the F is also important because if you want to sound like you're in mixolydian, you have to hit that flat seven because that's the distinctive uh, interval. So, so that means that if I think about this in terms of, of the pentatonic, I need to add the other two notes and that's what we'll do. We have the cap on it here and then we have this over here. So those are the two ways that we're gonna view uh, our notes as we, go th as, we, as we go through these. And I'll tell a story so that we can, and I'm just, in my mind, I'm trying to orientate how I can basically jump back and forth in my mind to visualize in between all of these different modes and all of these different shapes so that I can be versatile, communicate with other people, but also start to think of different lines if I wanted to improvise. Obviously, I, I tend to think of improvising more because I, I didn't learn music like sheet music, so I'm not as good at, I just like playing because to relieve stress and whatnot, which means I tend to do more uh, improvising stuff rather than, uh, rather than trying to read the music and, and uh, do a lot of, you know, the song, playing the song exactly like you might do in like classical stuff. I, have, I don't, so that's what I tend to enjoy like doing or how I look at it. So in any case, so let's do this. By the way, if I had more time, I would, I think I would enjoy uh, learning, like, to break down more complicated songs. <clears throat> if I had learned, if I had the time to, to learn that, or if I had learned that. But uh, this is where I'm, this is what I'm doing now. So we're going to go from uh, uh, here to here. So we're going to start on this G and say, okay, if we go up this, where, where are we starting? We're at what I would call, uh, if we look at, <clears throat> at the 2-2-1 two, two, breakout of the strings, we're at the flat, uh, the, one, the one of the strings. If we, if we look at, now it's the house analogy. If we look at the pentatonic hamburger barbell analogy, we're in the meat or middle part of the hamburger. I remember that by, by thinking that the mixolydian and maybe the A minor are kind of like the more American-y sounding sounds because they have that flat seven that kind of bluesy kind of sound so it's like in the meat of the hamburger which may be an american food i don't know all of our food has been uh has been imported i think but whatever i think of oh hold on a second so that's how i remember it so that's going to be then here and then down here it's at the right of the barbell so here's my barbell if it wasn't for the earthquake that messed up the fault line so it's shifted so you can see it over here it's the right of the barbell on the right side of the barbell that's where we stacked on the weights the heavy weights the heavy hitters and the major of the major modes which is the major mode over here and then the mixed lydian and then we kicked out the lydian and then over here you got the heavy hitters which is the a and uh which is the minor main minor and then the phrygian and we kicked out the uh, dorian even though the dorian is super cool but it's not as heavy and we're trying to build up strength with the barbell over here because the dorian has two major intervals whereas these only have less major intervals so it's more heavy man okay so then we're gonna go and then say that we start on then here which is going to be there and then we go do we go do do and then we go up to what i would call one way we can see it and i'm going to try to do these two analogies at the same time which i know is a little bit too much but i'm trying to get everything is everything i can in one practice session so and then i'll try to refine my language down so i get more uh better at it at at, at doing it efficiently so then we go back here, do 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 it. Every time we go off the hamburger, we have to go back one unless we're on the kink of the tuning. That's just the natural way it goes. And then we're at the bottom of what I would call the house uh, double stop. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we can also say that this this is going to be the the start of the, the top of the barbell. So we also can think of this as uh, the top of the barbell, and then we go to 
the this one and we have to shift up the invisible curve and these two are are like like that we have to shift up the invisible curb and this would be at what i would call the top of the double stop house or the bottom of the barbell okay it makes perfect sense totally i'm following i'm following right along with everything here all right let's do the intervals now just practice our intervals so i'm going to go so now we're on this g and we're going to go from here to here so this is going to be a two note away major second so boom boom two note away uh major second <clears throat> and what's the inverse of that would be 10 minus 2 which would be a uh 10 note away, or 12 minus 2 which would be a 10 note away uh a 10 note away minor 7. so if i went from g to a I'm going to say, okay, that distance is a whole step, otherwise known as a two note away major second. But if I went from A to G, oh man, there's a wildfire update. I'm going to be burned down over here in California. I hope, I hope I'm safe. I'm not even going to look at it anymore. I'm just going to say this is going to, it's going to go, if I went from here and I counted up 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 there we have to G. So that's because it's a circle. You can think of it as kind of a circle. And there we have it. Now the second of mode number five, Mixolydian, is if we think about this as absolute mode number five, why is it absolute mode number five? Because our C or Ionian is mode number one. And the fifth of it is then the Mixolydian. That means to get up to the fifth, it's actually four steps. Meaning if I'm on the one, I go up two, three, four, five. <laughs> to, so I go four steps up to get to the fifth. That's why the formula will be whatever mode I'm on, the fifth minus one is four. There's the four steps plus the second of whatever mode I'm on, which is, I mean, this plus whatever mode I'm on or the inner, the, the step, which is the second. So four plus two, uh, uh, five, four, <laughs> plus two is going to be, did I do that right? That's going to be f five minus one is four plus two is six. Right. Okay. And that's going to be the Aeolian. All right. I kind of messed that up. Sorry about that. That's the Aeolian and it's a minor mode. It's the main minor. Where does the Aeolian live over here? Uh, well, the Aeolian <clears throat> is always going to be in the flat. If I think of the the house analogy it's in the one it, that's the two string two string one string it's in the one string component and it hangs out with the g and it's not in the house in c's house because it's the main minor mode it does its own thing man it floats around in the middle of the hamburger here and then it's also in the top of the double stop box shape and then if you think of the hamburger analogy then it's in the meat of the hamburger hanging with the mixolydian which are the two main kind of I, in my mind american-y sounding things that's why it's in the, the meat of the hamburger all right so then i'm going to go down to the third so let's go to the third and say duh, 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 duh. all right so this is the third of the mode five mixolydian is going to be because it's a major mode it's going to be a four note away major third so whenever i see that shape unless I'm on the fault line down here, I'm always just gonna be like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a major third shape. So the inverse of that would be 12 minus four, which would be eight, that would be an eight note away, minor six. So if I see that shape top to bottom, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a major third, four note away, major third. But if I go from the bottom to the top, eight note away, and then it's a minor six, the majors inverts are typically minors. The third of the, mode number five mixolydian it's five minus one is four plus three uh four five six seven is absolute mode number seven which i call the which is the locrian mode the crazy mode where does the crazy locrian live it's in the house but it's up in the attic of the house so it's up in the attic of the house what about our our pentatonic analogy hamburger barbell well if it we're talking about the five notes in the normal pentatonic that we think about, it's not even included in there because that's the first one you would kick out if you only had five people to hang with 
and that crazy Locrian, he's not dangerous or anything. He's just kind of weird. So you don't like listening to him that much. So you get, <clears throat> so he got kicked out. So, so if we want to add that one back in, then of course we take the hamburger and we're going to add a step to the bottom bun of the hamburger supporting C, which is like kind of the load bearing point of the bottom bun of the hamburger. And you need a little bit more support on the hamburger because you're also going to add to it a hat, a ball cap that has the visor because this is the ocean up here and you're looking towards the sun. And if you add the ball cap up top, you have to add the added support. So the bun will have an added support, an, a ball cap hanging off to the right. And then you're going to have added support on the left to counterbalance the ball cap on the right. And you get this kind of Z shape uh, when you go from the hamburger to the seven note, uh, the seven notes. Okay, makes perfect sense. Then we're going to go to the next one. This is going to be the fourth, the fourth of the uh, mode five mixolydian is going to be a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because the distance between these two notes is just five, five note distance between two strings. And the inverse would be 12 minus five, which would be seven. That would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So whenever I see them stacked on top of each other, unless we're at the fault line down there because of the earthquake, then you've got a, uh, that's a that's a that's a a five note away perfect fourth and the inverse then is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth the perfects being inverts of each other and so so then we know that uh, the fourth of absolute mode number five mixolydian is five minus one is four plus four is eight there's only seven modes so eight minus seven is one otherwise known as uh, the Ionian or major scale. So where's the major scale over here? It's in the house. It's in the top box of the penthouse looking up towards the ocean. It's that's like its house, man, because it's the major scale. And then uh, and and uh, so there so there is that. Is there anything else I wanted to say? No. Oh, that's oh, if I look at it in the hamburger analogy, where is it? It's on the bottom left bone of the hamburger because it's the support of the hamburger. That's the load bearing support. That's how I imagine it. And then if you add the cap over here, it needs a little help to hold the hamburger up. So that's why you have to add the support of the B, which is the crazy Locrian to it from that analogy. All right, let's go to the next one then. We're gonna go to the fifth of uh, mode number five mixolydian. The fifth of mode number five mixolydian is a seven note away perfect fifth which is normal, normal mode, normal interval. How do I know that? Because I can go, this is five, six, seven, if I count that up, and 12 minus seven uh, is five, therefore the inverse is a five note away perfect fourth. So whenever I see that, I'm like, oh, that's a power chord. And then I, and then I do that to it and like try to make it sound heavy, uh, even though I'm on an acoustic, but that's what I do. So that's gonna be a, seven uh so anyways that's a perf seven note away perfect fifth and then the invert bottom to top is going to be a five note away uh perfect fourth okay and the fifth of mode number five mixolydian is five minus one which is four plus five uh is nine there's only seven modes nine minus seven is two which is mode number two the dorian mode where does the Dorian live? Well, the Dorian, as you can see by the lowercase Roman numeral is a minor mode. Therefore, it's not in the house because the only minor mode in the house is the Phrygian that hangs out in the basement down here with that minor second, the, 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 the minor that's even more minor than the main minor because it has a minor second. But this one hangs over here. If I'm looking at the house double stop, it hangs in the double stop with uh, the G and then it also hangs on the top of the of the double stop and then sometimes it's on the bottom of the double stop when we're looking at the double stop house shape then it's on the bottom hanging with a the main minor g is the mixolydian and then if i look at my hamburger shape it's funny the dorian is actually encompassing the area of the hamburger it's the top right it's top left bun to the to the bottom right bun of the hamburger which if i was to define this whole cell or this whole rectangle could be defined by those two squares. 
So it's not the low, I don't see it as the load bearing part of the shape because that's going to be C, especially when we, because it's going to need more support when I add the bill to the bun, but it's defining the, the cell uh, is the, is the, is the Dorian. Dorian is all bun. It's all bun, but it's encompassing the meat of the hamburger. Okay. And it's not in the, it's not in the barbell at all not even in the barbell don't want nothing to do with it because it's too cool the the Dorian's too cool to go to the gym I guess doesn't doesn't need barbell because it uses only free weights it doesn't believe in it doesn't believe in weights man I can do everything I need to do with a pull-up bar barbell man I, I can I climb up rocks or something to do my weight training but then we'll go down to the barbell all right, so now we're gonna be on the sixth. And so this is gonna be then uh, the sixth. Da -da. So that's gonna be, uh, uh, yeah. So that's gonna be the sixth of the mode five mixolydian is a nine note away major six, which is what we would expect, a major six. Uh, the inver How do I know that? Because I can count down, there'll be five, 10, nine. Inverse would be 12 minus 9, which would be 3, 3 note away minor 3rd. So if I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a 9 note away. I want to be able to hear it too. Ear training. Ear training. And then <laughs> the inverse <coughs> the inverse is going to be a <coughs> 3 note away minor 3rd. The inverse of a major is a minor. <clears throat> How can I train my ear when you keep talking? For crying out loud, I'm trying to hear the Okay, I was talking within a minor six tone to help you. Okay, no, I wasn't. Anyways, the sixth of mode number five, Mixolydian, <clears throat> is five minus one is four plus six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's only seven modes, so ten minus seven is three. That gives us absolute mode number three, the Phrygian. <clears throat> oh man, I'm losing my voice. Where's my coffee? don't go voice <clears throat> don't go i need you all right we're gonna be in our house analogy that the phrygian is the one minor mode as we can see with the lowercase roman numeral that hangs out in c's house but it hangs out in the basement and just plays the main minor which ha which is more minor than the minor mode because it has the minor second and it's usually rocking out with an amp pissing off the majors up over here and then Locrian doesn't care. It hangs up there in the attic. It's like whatever is doing his thing. So it's in there. And then if you look at the barbell analogy, notice the barbell is a little shifted up because of the fault line down here. So if you see the barbell over here, you can see that it's on the left. So the left of the barbell are the minor modes, which the bottom is the, is the main minor. And then the top is the other heaviest minor even heavier than than really the main minor because it has that minor second they kicked out the dorian not because the dorian's not cool but because it's not as heavy man because it has two major intervals in it so it's like not in the club of having being as heavy and then over here on the right of the barbell we've got the the most used major modes obviously c major and then of course the mixolydian on top of it but it's kind of staggered here because once again, there was an earthquake and like the earthquake made the, the whole floor over here like shift to the right. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the next one and we're gonna say the next one is gonna be the seventh of mode number five mixolydian. Uh, the seventh of a mixolydian is a 10 note away minor seven. That's the funny one, that's what makes it that's the funny interval because it's a major mode with a minor seven. The How do I know it's 10 notes away? Because I can count that up. It would be just five, 10. And the inverse 12 minus 10 is two, two note away major second. So if I see that shape, I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a 10 note away minor seven. The inverse therefore is a two note away major second. Inverse of a minor is typically a major and the seventh of mode number five, mixolydian, is five minus one is four plus seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only seven modes, so eleven 
minus 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is 4, right? It's 4. And that's going to be the Lydian. Where does the Lydian live? The Lydian's a major mode. It's going to be uh, mode number 4, least, least popular, I think, of the major modes. It's still in the house. It's in C's house over here, but it's on the bottom floor of the house, still looking up towards the ocean. Uh, in terms of our five note pentatonic hamburger barbell analogy, we're currently in the barbell and you can see the barbell more clearly over here when it's not shifted up from the kink in the tuning. And you can see it's in the middle of the barbell and like the handle part, the handle part is staggered. So you have the top of the handle over here and then the bottom handle over here. And so that's, that, would, that would even out to the middle of the handle, which is where you put your fingers on a barbell, but because it's a grid, you had to go top and then bottom to, mir to mirror, to mimic the idea that the handle would be like even. You see what I mean? Even on both sides. So usually when you play the barbell pentatonically, you just play the outer bits of the barbell and you don't play the middle bits because they've been removed. But obviously here we're adding the middle bit back. And so we're adding that middle bit, which is right next to the, 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 uh, the Phrygian. So the Phrygian is always the one after uh, is the Lydian because the main, the, the heavy minor mode is, is annoying the uh, Lydian mode is kind of how I think of it. All right, let's go to the next one. That means we're going back home to the 12 note away uh, octave. 12 note away octave. And we can see uh, here that it doesn't have that leading tone like most major scales do. So it's more, it's way more like a minor there because that's kind of a, a defining factor of most major modes that you have that leading tone going home. That's what makes a lot of the minors in my, like if you think about it, them being jealous a little bit of some of the stuff that the majors have, the majors have that leading tone going home, uh, which gives you that pull, which the minors don't have. And the mixed Lydian's more like the minor because it doesn't really have that leading tone going home. But you can always add it. You can be like, whatever, I'll just throw that one in. I'll throw in a chord that has that leading tone right before I go home. And then, and then you can, and then that's how you might adjust, add some notes to your scale, giving it a little bit more flavor. All right, let's go back the other way, but first, a, a joke. All right, these are, these are not great jokes, I know, but this is practice session here. So here we go. All the lies and manipulation told during the election cycle really starts to piss you off, you know? Starts to piss you off. And, and I don't know about you, but when I get pissed off, I like to piss off something else. Usually, usually the bathroom rug into the toilet. Why? Because it makes me feel better, that's why. You know, for some, for some reason, pissing off the bathroom rug into the can feels like releasing a great weight off my shoulders. I don't know why I get pissing off the, pissing off the bathroom rug into the can feels like a great weight has been released from my shoulders. I don't know why. It, mu it must be some, there must be something therapeutic, like a, there's a therapeutic thing about it, you know, that it feels like it's releasing a weight. Okay. That was horrible. That's not funny. All right, that's why I'm an accountant, okay? But I'm practicing. I, if I do this for another 20 years, you will see me in the lounges making jokes and people are gonna love it. I just need a little bit more practice. I'll get there. I'll get there, okay? Anyways, I just saw a hundred year old yeah, that was funny on the on the interwebs. So let's go back the other way. We're going to go from, let's say this is the one or the eight and go back down to the seven. So now we're going to, so if I, if I do that, the seven, so now we're going to be comparing to this note instead of this note. And so that's kind of the opposite of the direction we normally go, but it's good practice to go both ways here. So now we're going to go back the other way. So the seventh of mode number five mixolydian we know is a 10 note away minor seventh and the inverse now how do i know that because the distance between these three notes or these notes is uh two and that would be a two note away major second so normally i would see this and go okay how would i figure this out well going this way 
that's a two note away major second. Therefore, the inverse is 12 minus two, which is uh, 10, 10 note away minor seven going from G to F. All right, let's go back to the prior one. And we're gonna say then this one is gonna be from here to here is gonna be the sixth of mode number five mixolydian is going to be, we know that that six is gonna be a nine note away major six. How do I know that? Well, if I go this way, it's three notes away. That's the way I would normally go. My fingers worked. And therefore the inverse would be 12 minus three, which would be uh, a nine note away major six. So going from G to A, nine note away major six. All right, let's go back down to the fifth then, if we could, if I can. Do you mind if I, we'll go back down here. So now this is going to be the fifth of mode number five mixolydian is a seven note away perfect fifth. And uh, how do I know that? How do I know that? Because the distance from uh, D to G is five notes away. So I usually see it going this way when I see that stack. And I'm like, oh, that's a that's a five note away perfect fourth. Therefore, the inverse from going from G to D, 12 minus five is seven, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, and then I'm gonna go back down to the fourth, the fourth, which is gonna be here. And that's gonna the fourth of mode number five, mixolydian it is a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know? Because if I go this way, it would be five, six, seven. So if I see that shape, I'm like, oh, power chord. And then I start doing that, which doesn't, that doesn't sound good, but. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but it's, uh, but uh, if I go the other way, it's 12, uh, it's 12 minus, uh, 12 minus uh, seven, which is five, five note away, perfect fourth my brain went a little dead because I was I was rocking on the power cord and then we're gonna go back to the last one and so this is gonna be here to here and this will be the the third of mode number five mixolydian which is a four note away major third how do I know I'm counting from down here again so I'm gonna go from here to here that's gonna be five six seven eight uh, so that would be an eight note away major or minor six. So if I see that shape, which is a little bit more unusual because I might, and I might get there by saying, well, this would be seven note away perfect fifth. Therefore, that's an eight note away minor six. The inverse then would be 12 minus eight, which would be four note away major third. All right, and then I'm gonna go back down to the uh, to the second, which is going to be here, and this is going to be uh, the second of mode number five mixolydian. It's a two note away major second. How do I know? Because I can count this up. If I went from A down, it would be five ten. So going this way. Whoop, hold on, that's the wrong note. Ten note away. Uh, 10 note away minor 7 therefore the inverse is 12 minus 10 or 2 2 note away major 2nd and that brings us back to the octave alright let's do
trying to practice my two note per string intervals a little bit because I was playing with this. This idea of playing the, the, the chords this way as though I'm playing each of these strings like back, like that would be uh, wait, an A minor. Well, the, wait. That would be, well, it would be here's the C. And then the B would be. And then the A minor. But if I connect those shapes up, I should be able to get a pattern that goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So I can play, I can play like the scale with two notes per string. And then try to, try to improvise throwing that in the mix. throw this one in the mix. The B is a little funny because it's going to be the Locrian. So it looks like this. Oops. And then if I tie that to, to the C, which looks like this, when I lean back, that lean back shape, that I can say it goes from the B to the C, one, it would be one, two, three, four, or it would be B, C, B, C, D, E, uh, F, G, A, B, C, A, so let's just do that. C to the D, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Thank you. 
trying to work that.
looking at another one here just to get a little sidetracked on this and a little, little sidetrack today like I was thinking that I should be able like I was trying to think like if you break the guitar up into these five chunks but there's really seven modes we're kind of using you know one chunk for a couple of modes so you would think that you would also have like these in between shapes that I was trying to think about that you can kind of again kind of maybe break out of the normal routine uh, if you thought about like the scale like in between the shapes so you kind of break out of the boxes and I was I was messing with that idea and I started looking like this noticing that like you could maybe like play still see this is still within one two three four five uh a five finger radius with all the notes but i'm gonna play them inverted a little bit right and then so if you learned like i'm thinking if like if you learned that pattern then you might like i say like play you you know you might be able to like play something a little bit differently as you as we because what it's going here is I'm going so what I'm thinking what I was thinking I started thinking is like well I can go from C to D and I was doing the two note per string thing but then but then I was like uh, if I go to D instead of going to this E what if I skipped a string and I played it kind of out of, uh, uh, not in the same order, right? So inverted. So then I was like, okay, well, where would the next string be here? Well, it's way over here. That's too far. That's too far. Uh, what about if I go down to here, then that's a nice convenient one. So if I thought about, the th about it that way, I can go, this is going to be C, D, and then E, F. And then I back up here, G, A, B, C. Now, why would you do that? Again, I, you don't have to play it in the order of the scale, but you have all your notes within a five, a five note interval. And you have like, you know, in a different, a different inversion there. And that might, again, if you noodled around with that, you'd probably end up playing like different stuff, which is what I was thinking. So like, I can be like, this is going to be C, D, and then the E is actually jumping up to here. I'm jumping up to, to the third, which is up here. Boom. So how does that sound? What is that? C, D, E. <laughs> Sounds a little wonky, right? <laughs> C, D, E, F. And then I went to the G, G. A, B, C. Uh huh. Perfect. So I don't know. I was, I, I'm not sure I can do anything with that. But if I played that like in order this way, just from top to bottom, so it would be inverted. It would be like. Uh, what did I do? It would be like. Uh, C, D. And then G, A. Wait a sec, I lost one. Okay. So it would be like C, D, G, A, B, C. Right? <laughs> And then the E, and then the E F would be down here. So C D G A C D. Wait a sec. I'm a, no, I'm I'm all messed up. C D G C D. C, B, F. 
so that's really wonky. I'd have to mess with that to make it. Maybe I would move my finger up from this C, D, G, A, or maybe like C, D, G, A, B, C, E, E, F, C, D, C, D, G, A, B, C, E, F. So that's a kind of a wonky jump. But then... So I don't know, I was just thinking like of a different a different kind of pattern. This A out here is a little bit little bit of a stretch. Like you could have actually pull the A over here. But I was trying to get a two note per string pattern so that I can always get two notes so that it always kind of makes sense because I'm like, oh it's two notes per string. That's easy to remember. So I was like two notes here. Two notes here.
fine with that. So I should, I think I'm pretty much done with most of the, what was I on? I was on.
it there.